I'm the Instructional Technology Coordinator. And at Center, we're, I'm at Center College, we're a little bit different because we're actually, I'm part of the Center for Teaching and Learning. So I'll give you a little bit of background about the, the CTL, but first I just want to share with you what I'll be discussing today. I'm going to give you a background of the CTL and how we form some collaboration that we've done with CTL, ITF, and libraries. So when I saw the, the title, I wasn't sure exactly what to talk about, and so I, I, my director and I just talked and said, well, let's just share some of the ways that we do collaborate with ITS and libraries, since we are three separate entities on campus. And then some future projects that we're actually working on are in the process of. Okay, so the Center for Teaching and Learning. This is us, not all of us, but a more recent picture. So now, we report to the Dean of Faculty. All right, there are, or will be, seven staff members. Community-based learning has moved into the CTL. Um, we're actually in the process of hiring a faculty position for experiential learning, okay? Um, that is kind of like what we talked about with John and everybody having that faculty role. We actually have an event and video coordinator in our office. Two of us are instructional technology, and then we have an office manager. We have formed recently a six faculty member advisory board. Okay, so if you were to take this a year and a half ago, none of these positions would be here. Okay, and uh, our director, Sarah Lashley, I don't know if you guys know her, she wanted me to share this because we have changed and the library has changed, and ITS has changed. So we've had some turnover, people are retiring, which has allowed us, I think, to kind of think about ways that we're gonna actually work better together. Okay, so we only had, we still had a video event, but not a new person. So if you look at this, really Lisa and I, Lisa's our office manager, are the only two people that are, uh, have been there since the CTL form. Uh, we formed back in 2006, we came out of, I came out of ITS, we formed a new department that we were under, the library, and it wasn't until a year, not even a year and a half ago, that we moved under the Dean of Faculty, and so our library and our ITS and CTL all report to the Dean of Faculty. So at least now we're all under one, umbra or one umbrella who our directors report to. Okay. And if you guys have questions, uh, stop me. Okay. Now I'm not going to read this to you, but what Pam was saying really struck me too. What what John Stay was mentioning, right? Because we revised our mission. I, obviously, I'm an instructional technologist, right? We were primarily our department was really instructional technology, right? It wasn't really until we have our new director that really talked about. Uh, more of the pedagogical approaches without technology, and so we've revised our mission. But I have no idea what the library and ITS's mission, and, and when Jonathan was saying that, it made me think the same thing, okay, on there about that collaboration, and we all have the same mission. Okay, it's on our website too. I'm not going to read that, but I just wanted to show that. And then some program and, uh, programs and events that we do. Okay, I'm just going to pull them all up here. All right, so we now do new faculty orientation. Sarah so Lashley, our director, handles that. Teaching and learning events we support for faculty. Uh, we have, obviously, instructional technology workshops and support. We do consultations for faculty. We do do media and events. So if there's a, a combo that needs videotapes, our event person does that, but he also records homecoming <laughs> and all those events. So it's interesting that it's under our umbrella. And then obviously we do some funding uh, supports for technology or for faculty, but they're not always technology because we're trying to not move away, but just make sure that that's not the main, main mission, right? But it's actually their teaching. And so it's something, not that it's hard for me, but because we've been so technology focused, it's a big change for Lisa and I because we are the only two that, okay, let's, we're moving. We know it's a better direction, but so, how do we collaborate with that? All right, so I'm going to talk briefly about our library viewing room, and I have some photos to pull up to our presentation space that all three departments work together on creating. Our collaborative spaces uh, within the reference area in the library, and some future projects. Uh, the future projects, and I know we spoke yesterday, some of you guys, we have this training computer lab that our faculty 
we do uh, instructional technologists and library views. So uh, I have photos I'm going to show you of that space as well. We're looking at how we can redesign it to make it more usable and practical for students. And then I'll talk about our user support group. Okay. So when the library was finished being built, and I think it was in 2005, we have a viewing room. So a small room where faculty can come and show films if they want to for their class. But our librarians recognize that, hey, our students really need to have practice with presentations. We've had faculty come to us and the CTL say, yeah, they don't have any presentation skills, etc. So we work together with the library to say, okay, what space do we have on campus? Because we have no more way to add more space to somewhere else, right? And what can we do to that? So our present space, our uh, viewing room, we decided to take that room and actually make it a presentation room. So really what we did is, okay, here's a space and we'll just purchase some equipment to make it where they can video, kind of lecture capturing, right, webcam, they can record themselves presenting and then they can save it on a flash drive or the server space. So um, ITS had worked with the library on that space before when the renovations finished. So we just kind of worked together, already right, helping them with the needs. So we didn't really do a whole lot with that um, on there. This started in the spring of 2013. We enhanced it a little bit more with technology. We added it to our uh, really old and bad online reservation system. <laughs> so I was intrigued when Pat was showing us around and what you guys have. Um, and it's a space that students can use individually for their presentations. Faculty can reserve it for small groups, and obviously if there's other small groups, students want to use it. So I'm going to show you some pictures because I like visuals. Okay, so this is our, our space. It's right behind the reference area in the library. And you'll see, you know, obviously a flat screen on the wall, speakers. You'll see the old TV cart. That's what <laughs> used to be in there a couple of years ago. So we worked with IT on just making sure you know, where's, we can get wireless points and all that in there as well. A webcam, and then this is our standard, one of our standard kind of old stations with the DVD and VCR, or VHS tapes. Because students can also still use it as a viewing room if they want to um, with it. And then I just thought you guys might want to see the chairs, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can go back if you want to see that. So, um, <laughs> and then see 16 students So before there. you leave that, yes. how often does it get reserved? How successful it's, is it? You know, um, in the, I think for as a, just a viewing room, it didn't get reserved a lot, because we have a theater downstairs in the, the CTL area, so faculty still want to use it, it's more comfortable chairs and stuff. But when that's booked, because it's booked all the time, then hey, if you have a smaller group, you can reserve that. I know in the evening, for presentations in the spring, we had several classes that their faculty members required them. You must go record yourself, because the faculty member actually wanted to see it before they actually present it in the class. So I think it's starting to take off. The, um, the thing we haven't done well, and I, I don't feel like we do this well in a, in a lot of things, we implement something maybe new, but we don't market it as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe you all have the same type of thing, or we could do better at the ways that we market that um, to there. But this spring, we, I don't think we've seen students in there yet as far as recording, but I know November, December it tends to be the time where it gets really busy um, with that. A lot of students, if they're athletes and they're gone, they'll come in there when they get back and watch a film if they missed it for class. We show a lot of films. On, on campus. I don't know if you all do, but sometimes I think a little too much. But but yeah, a great question. Um, does anybody else have any other questions with that space? So, all right. So the, the newer spaces, the collaborative spaces that we've done for students. Okay. So last fall, it, we had, there's a need on campus for more faculty offices. And we do not have any more buildings, any more space. All right. There was a lot of staffing changes also in the library. Some people retired um, and their people moved in and out of other positions. So with that, the reference area, it was determined on the third floor of our somewhat newer library that we need to clear it out because we're going to make faculty offices. And our library staff weren't uh, that thrilled. It might be in videotape, so probably not. They weren't asked 
drilled, right? And students weren't happy about it either because they used that, that space up there, okay? But it was determined that they need to start clearing out that area and the reference area, okay? Start clearing out things and begin work on that third floor so we can build offices um, on that third floor of the library. Okay, but with that, okay, there was a give and take. Dean Campbell, our director, said, hey, all right, if I give you this space, you know, we need space for our students. Okay, so they have, I think we might have 13 study spaces on campus now, study rooms in the library, and they get used all the time. I mean, there's our reference librarians and other libraries need to kick students out because they only have a time limit on how long they can have that space. I think it's like two hours, okay? So, hey, we'll give you 13 spaces if we can squeeze it, but we want two additional study spaces. So that was um, added up on the uh, third floor as well, okay? So, but then there was also a need by our reference librarians that said, hey, we need student seating. Okay, so our librarians recognized that and then came to us in the CTL to say, okay, what do you think about where we might be able to put it in the library? We have our own ideas, but we want to hear from you as well. Okay, so they had to really rethink. We had to rethink with them the layout in the other areas. Okay, and then fortunately, our alumna, our office, came to our director of library and said, hey, I have funds a donor has given to libraries. You need it. He's like, oh, perfect timing. We can actually do something with that. Okay? So it all kind of worked together, which is uh, great. Okay? So what we realized, um, and, I, and I love seeing the learning comments because when we formed the CTL, that was something our one who was our head of reference librarian always wanted, but it's kind of a taboo word on Center's campus, so we can't really say that word. Um, but she recognizes that they, we need to have a collaborative area. So on the first floor next to the reference area, and I have pictures of that, we decided that's going to be where we're going to clear out all the reference area, we're going to actually put it in, and we actually consulted with SGA student government to determine their input on do you want something where you just walk up? You know, what are you thinking? Like, if you're going to be working, and and um, we in the CTL, not be particularly our academic technologist, worked with the library on actually the layout. She does all of our classroom design and layout. Can, well. can I just say, just yes. the SGA provided input with furniture. What the library did when we redid the commons is they brought in a bunch of pieces of furniture and they put whiteboards next to them, and and they just ask the students to please tell them like which chair did they find the most comfortable, which one did they like the best. And so for several months we had all this furniture scattered around with whiteboards next to it and people starting to put their opinions. It, it was really a very useful exercise for us to figure out what furniture to put in. Yeah, because, and, and we did something very similar, and I, I've seen other schools in, in Kentucky that they've had like, oh, just check mark and stuff, and then it was like, oh, not really a contest, but if people really wanted this one piece, it yeah. kind of help. Yeah, with that. Yeah. Um, so we really, in the CTL, worked with the library and the layout and, and obviously the furniture design, okay? Where ITS and the library worked on more making sure that, and I'll show you a picture of our media table, okay? They determined, okay, we'll have a media table, we have some uh, study tables, we'll have power, make sure we have more wireless points, um, all that, okay, on there. So here are some photos of when you first walk in, okay? And all of our tables are flexible, so if students want to work in groups or if they want to move it away, and we, um, you know, obviously have it separated by a whiteboard there. Uh, I, I found it interesting, though, that the whiteboards, I didn't realize, students have to check out the markers <laughs> and stuff. So they're not just out there, which I thought was interesting because in the basement of our building by our area, it's all study area that our parents program donated a year or so ago. And students are down there all the time studying you know, whiteboards and there's markers and everything just laying out. So I found it interesting they have to check out markers and erasers, okay? And then we do have some reference areas still, but a lot of it got moved and they're in the process of uh, weeding all of that out. But you'll see like the triangular mm -hmm. tables can be pulled apart. Um, those chairs over on the wall, those are probably the least popular, 
okay, with our students. And especially, I, I went and took pictures early in the morning because I wanted, I, I didn't want students to worry about, oh, I just took pictures, we're going to be showing it, so um, on here, but it's just another angle. Why do you suppose see. that is, do they, is it that they want to put their laptops out or things like that? Why do you suppose it's the least? The least? Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's, I haven't sat in them, but I think it's because of the space. They like to sprawl out. Because one mm -hmm. thing our reference librarians have told me and the rest of us um, is that if someone's sitting at, especially that one, this one table, right, uh, this one right here, if one person's sitting there, another person doesn't feel comfortable enough to go and let me right. sit next to you. Yeah. And so we were talking about it before I left for this, that maybe let's try to separate them out, not push them together, and see if they'll fill up. Because then if you are working in a group, someone might say, oh, I can just wheel it over. Maybe. But I, I, I know, I don't know if that's the reason why with those chairs, but they uh, love the media table. Which I think it's next. the wooden sides because yeah. they can't comfortably yeah. turn sideways. Yeah. Right? Because they love to turn sideways and drape, and drape their legs yeah. over. It's not comfortable yeah. on their back. And I had a closer <laughs> picture of it. <laughs> and they, they like this because they can put, like, the, you can see the power and stuff is in there. Um, with it, but this is the most popular, mm -hmm. and so they're actually talking about, hey, how can we get another one of these, or maybe more bench style or something, because, uh, of course, they have students that will stay on one side and take naps there and things like that, and so, you know, <laughs> but this is meant, you know, the TV, you know, they can hook up their projector or laptop, they can check out laptops um, from the library. I wanted to mention, because I think uh, when Jonathan mentioned all the checkout equipment, in the CTL, we check out all this equipment, like video cameras and tripods and photo cameras and laptops and projectors. So our library has laptops that they can check out for like two hours. But in the CTL, we handle all the equipment reservations that students might need for class. But they're looking to put another bench. I don't know if it will work if they move those tables, uh, those chairs up to put there. That was one suggestion, because um, students just love hanging out there. I have a um, question. What, what why does why do they have the separation of checkout? Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, the library had always had that, and when we formed the CTL back in 2006, we converted um, from ITS and then audiovisual, and that was just one thing that hey, it was determined we have all this need and stuff. Um, the library in the past was very protective of okay, these are our checkout laptops and things like that. I do, I, I am going to take back, hey, not that we want to give them all the equipment, but, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> but I know our office manager, she's the one that handles all that. Mm -hmm. And she's only 35 hours a week, or 37.5 or whatever, so she's the only hourly in our office, so, and it's a lot. When she's not there, like, I'll handle it or somebody else because we're mm -hmm. and smaller, so it's, mm -hmm. huh? A library... A library have an inventory control system. Mm -hmm. It's their yeah. checkout system. Yeah. And yeah. so they are just superb of, mm -hmm. of doing that. So yeah. give it all well, up. Well, and we have, we have a really old online reservation system, and our IT director is actually, he's uh, wanting to roll out something else in January. I'm not part of that discussion. but So I think for a while we're going to have two to see how it is. But our office manager is like, you don't realize calendaring, yes, events, but then we have all this equipment, too, and trying to figure out how it's best going to be fit. I don't think our reference librarians would love to have all that equipment. <laughs> but it would make it easier because she's only here like 8 to 12, 1 yeah. to 4.30, and then pass if they don't come by 4.30, 5 o'clock, right, you know. Can you find people? Can we find people? When, when they don't bring the equipment back? Uh, yeah, and we, uh, we uh, two years ago we had a student hang on to a laptop, and that's when we implemented the fine system. It's there, it's like a dollar every hour they're late, but we've never, besides that student, we've never had to, uh, even if it's like a day late, we're okay with it. And we're like, don't worry about it, you know, it's okay. Yeah, that's the nice thing about library, the library too, is they can find. Yeah, yeah. So I, I am, I was really excited about that. I took a note to take that back because it, I think it's a worthwhile discussion to bring uh, forth. It would definitely service, I think, the students better. They wouldn't have to worry about yep. yeah. their yeah. four five. And then these are our, our older study um, carols. They kind of moved into where they can come up with a reference and, and just quickly look. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to 
show that. And then this is just another view. Most of it's separated by whiteboards where they can draw and um, you know, also have privacy if they wanted to. So that's our newer space, and it's pretty popular during in our library, That's especially past 6 o'clock. It's really good. Right, question. A lot of this is open. Is there any concern for like noise? You know, I don't know. I didn't think to ask that, but I have, I mean, well, and I know, you know, that's why I was impressed on the first floor. Like, it's pretty, the, uh, I think the second and third levels are uh, the quiet area, so there's small talking on there, but it's not, even when I walk in the library, I'm like, I try when I go, try to whisper to not be so loud, but, you know, I don't know that question, so with it. I don't think it gets overly noisy in the library, which is kind of sad. If you have students working in groups, I think they're talking uh, really quietly. But I'll, I'll find out. Okay. Um, so some future projects. This uh, library training room slash computer lab is the, the name of it. All right. So we're just now beginning discussions, and it, there's nine of us uh, in CTL, library, all the reference to instructional tech and some of the ITS to determine what to do with this space. The lab was created back in 2005, okay? So you know, imagine the, the furniture and all that is, you know, pretty old and fit the times back then, okay? But we use it in the CTL when we do faculty workshops or faculty use it uh, as a one-off if they need a lab classroom. Um, it can't be reserved uh, throughout the entire semester, but our library uses it a lot for reference instruction, okay? We also started three years ago this extended orientation for all of our first years, so the library gets all the first years for two weeks, CTL gets them for a week, and so we do 15 instruction sessions, right, for an hour for the first um, month or five weeks of the fall term, okay? So that space is not big enough now to hold our uh, EXO sessions with that. So some questions that we're looking at is, okay, how are we using the space, right? What are we doing? And then how are students mm -hmm. using it in the evening, right? Because it's an open lab. It's the only lab um, in the library, right? It's all PC um, on there, but are our students even using it, right? It's down in the basement of the library, okay? So here's some furniture pictures of what it looks like. When it was built in 2005, the reference librarians wanted a podium at the front. I know me and my former colleague, she's no longer here at center, wanted more like be able to kind of see everybody, so centralized in the back, okay? But there's 26 student machines, and now we need at least 32, right? So we need six more uh, machines. I don't think we need two podiums, but the lighting, bad, uh, the wall color, it's just bulky furniture, you can't really do anything um, with that. So we're looking at how can we maybe get rid of the furniture, or how can we improve this space, um, and then just uh, put in all of uh, our classrooms, our touch panel. And ITS manages the labs and classrooms. I forgot to mention that. Classrooms used to be under CTL until February of this year. Mm -hmm. Our classroom first thing got moved under um, ITS now. So it's been very interesting because our academic technologist is supposed to work with IT and, and the person in IT that does the lab. So having that communication so we can make sure the equipment, everything's okay. Yeah. yeah. One question is, I guess I was just thinking about this, like looking at that computer lab and thinking of some spaces we have on our campus. You know, thinking of like, instead of like a big desktop machine, having like uh, laptops in the room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there'd be potential risk of someone walking off with a yeah. laptop or something like that. But you know, it seems like being able to move. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've talked about laptop. I know, and which is why our our IT folks. Oh, it's not impossible, but it might be hard with wireless and all that. And and I don't know because I'm not a network person, but. We talked about that because we visited other schools in Kentucky and they've had more flexible spaces. They have laptops in a cart, right, that's locked. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be, I mean, students could either check out the laptops or stuff. So uh, um, 
glad to hear that you mentioned something like that as well because I think the furniture needs to go. We need open more space, but we also want students to go down there and just kind of hang out, right? If they're not doing a, in a class, they're not going to be in a classroom instruction past 5 o'clock. So it's just unwanted space right now. So, but if you guys have other ideas, I would love to hear what you think might um, be good, but we're SGA is going to uh, survey the students because mm -hmm. I want to be a math lab. We have no math lab on campus. Uh, only a few of us want it that way, but I know um, we have a small video editing lab, but we have a lot of classes that assign video projects. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if I'll win that battle because some of our reference librarians want PC. But yeah, so, but I think the laptops would probably, it would be better. But I mean, the, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. I didn't get close-up pictures of it, but um, but that's one space that we're looking at to determine, and we're actually thinking of trying to write a grant for um, the to the parents program with ITS, CTL, and library, saying how faculty use that space, how the library uses that space, so hopefully we can get funding for it because there's not funding in the, in the capital budget for that. Okay. So what we've done also, so we have that small group talking about that space, but now we have a user support group. Back in 2009, we started something like this between CTL, ITS, and library. But then it kind of went away. No one did anything. People left. Okay? So we're thinking, we need to reform that group because we need to communicate. We need to figure out what are the questions our librarians are getting asked, Right, for students that have issues. Um, our new director in ITS, he's fairly new. He started in May or June. Okay, so he's really talking about the help desk and trying to be more service oriented past five o'clock, right? How we can help students that way. All right, so we're gonna be talking about departmental initiatives and also address any user problems and really uh, problems and concerns that they have. So hopefully, we just met last week for our first meeting, we're meeting bi-weekly. Uh, CTL bought lunch the one day, ITS is going to buy lunch the next day, so lunch, kind of the lunch and learn, uh, <laughs> lunch and discussion, so, because we realize that you can be, and you guys must have the same thing, right, you get so much going on in your day, you might say, oh, I forget to talk with so-and-so, or so-and-so there, so we're trying to make a concerted effort to meet and find out what things are happening. If ITS makes a decision in the classroom and we don't know about it in the CTL, that impacts our faculty. Right, so we're trying to, to have that kind of discussion with that. So communication obviously is the key for us. These are our, our three directors, uh, Sarah Lashley in CTL, Keith Folks in ITS, and Jane Campbell in the library. Um, with that, and then I just thought I'd bring up a picture of all of us, except for our new our community-based learning person because she's a VISTA person and just started, so I don't have her picture up here. But so we have about, we'll have seven people in CTL next, this time next year. Library has nine and ITS has nine. Okay, with that um, on here. So does anybody have questions for me at all or questions we want to discuss? Fred, Fred can I ask you, um, uh, Richmond has the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology. Yeah. Right. You still have the CTL person in the center? Do you still have that position? Uh, no, the faculty development. Type yeah, the person. faculty development person. Oh gosh, no, um, and that was a strange one. So that had moved over. It was going to become a faculty uh, development director. Of course, faculty in Richmond, or we're looking all for those better phrases for that uh, around campus. But we had uh, two and a half failed searches, and so then the provost said, "No, we're not going to try it again." Although we're going to be getting a new provost in the next year. So the provost said yeah. we're not going to try that again, but right. the position was actually reporting into your VP for Information Services. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, so why did the provost get to say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, the, the position had moved in order oh, to make it a university moved. resource uh, in, in that format. And then while they were trying, they took the position to make this director's position, and they're going to have an administrative assistant as well. Um, at that time, they went through all these failed searches, and they said, we can't, as an institution, find one person to do all these different things. And like it's been mentioned before, it's, it's tar hard to get one person in, in some cases where you've got a very wide um, 
uh, set of responsibilities and skills and all that. They were looking for someone with civil experience and uh, they wanted a full professor and things like that. There's a lot of issues, I guess, overall. So they've stretched a lot of our supporting areas to develop what's called a faculty enrichment ad hoc committee uh, that has people from all these different uh, centers and offices. And so we don't have a single person. So our group has kind of stepped in a little bit more into faculty enrichment. But so I mean, that's tough. just interesting really be because the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology was initiated at Richmond in 2000. Um, I was the founding director, which is why I feel like I have something to say about it. Um, <laughs> and um, um, so here's a situation where that was tried to be brought together, as Jonathan was talking about trying to bring these departments together. But yet here's a situation where it was tried and now it's been separated back out again. I mean, what Candace has described is... Uh, really taking an, an awful lot of what I consider technology responsibilities and putting them into a teaching and learning center, mm -hmm. which doesn't resonate with me. To me, it's very dissonant, but I don't, so I want to, curious what other people think about that. Well, and I think at Center 2, our former director, she was an instructional technologist. So, you know, with her and, and I, and we merged with audiovisual, and so we just kind of ended up, you know, putting out fire. It just became like that. You know, we did put on faculty some events and stuff, but they really made a conscious effort when she left to say, okay, we're not just going to be technology, right? Let's, we're not moving instructional technology out. We just want one area. And so uh, Sarah, our director, and then the new position um, are the only two faculty status positions at center. Our librarians don't have faculty status. May I so ask a broader question? How yeah. many institutions here have a center for teaching and learning? Mm -hmm. yeah. How many? Everybody? No. no? About five? No. Did I see about five? Yeah. So who does it? David, you don't, and Hendricks? We don't, yeah. Pam does it? We have a center for teaching. It's not a center for teaching and learning, and it needs some energy right now. It means what? Energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, in response, so do we all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in response to your question, think about what Jonathan said about having a digital archivist and in a few years you won't call it a digital archivist. Yeah. So I think that's the question for me that looks at a center for teaching and learning. All right, why would you have, there used to be a reason to have a center for teaching and learning and technology because it was different from the teaching and learning you were mm -hmm. doing without technology. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's, again, another kind of merger as you're seeing happening. So does instructional technology move in this direction? Mm -hmm. <laughs> does, does that function move into IT or libraries? I mean, it's the same sort of redefinition in the space. Yeah, and one thing, too, in my, with my position, too, even as we form the CTL, for staff development and training, that fell under me, right? So it was like, you have faculty and staff, and now students, and so it's, uh, we haven't revisited with ITS on staff development. Uh, we kind of put it on a hold, right? And so, I mean, staff still come to me, but it's, we don't have another position for that. So it's pretty unique as far as, okay, where are we gonna go in the future? And I have no idea how that's gonna evolve. Um, yeah, I mean, Pam, to get to your comment, I, I absolutely, I mean, our instructional technologists do a wonderful job of approaching every problem first from the pedagogical <coughs> attitude of what is it you're trying to accomplish. But, but I still think there is usefulness in having a person who really focuses their thinking all the time on learning outcomes and assessment sure. of learning and all those things. So it's, it's part of that continuum. Right. But organizationally, and exactly. Mm -hmm. But then do you have one organization or is it broken up in five yeah, pieces right, or sure, three yeah. pieces? And yeah. I think that's what's going to be keep changing because there's no right answer. Right, mm -hmm. right. And it seems to change more based on personality of sure. people mm -hmm. than it does on right. where the right place for right. function lies. Well, and maybe some of the background of people. <coughs> so if you came yeah. from an academic computing background or that that's where your orientation sort of is more than 
So I think it's as much that what people are bringing to the table, yeah. especially on the IT side, since there's no profession, it really is highly dependent on the person who comes into that. Yeah. And, and a part of it's sort of backing in using the skills you have, yeah. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, that, I think that really largely dictates how successful you are, because if you go and try to play, replace a whole cloth with a bunch of skills that your people don't have, right. then never will succeed. Right. Yeah. And we just got, um, I guess, through five requests by the faculty, uh, we have a new space called the Collaborative. And so the idea was to kind of take the CTL, the teaching out of the out of the CTL, so just uh, Center for Learning. And so now they have their own specific space to where they have these conversations that deal just with the teaching, not necessarily with the technology involved. But we still have our, our we're actually the Center for Learning and Technology. So we don't necessarily have the teaching aspect in it, but the, the new space, the collaborative, is where they go to kind of get these pedagogy type, type ideas, and ideally they'll bring in our department in there to kind of bring in a technology aspect of it too. So, so they take the T out of the CTL. <laughs> yeah, there's a professor at Rhodes who, he, he does teaching and learning seminars, and so there now is a teaching and learning in the 21st century working group, uh, the worst long name, <laughs> that, is, that is supposed to be including faculty, staff, and students in communicating about new technologies and desires and, and appli applications people are using that are successful. Teaching and learning is used in both of those uh, jobs or, or groups or whatever and they mean different things, I think. Mm. I think it's confused. I think it's going to be confusing for people because our faculty member just conducts seminars for faculty. Uh, it's pedagogy related and closed. It's just for faculty. And this other group is an attempt to communicate across faculty, staff, and students mm -hmm. to understand needs, to see what's on the horizon, and to talk about what we're doing currently. So it's more informal. But there's not a center. And Fred, does does Richmond still have the PEAT program yes. of faculty? Right. So so that's the program for effective teaching that brings the faculty together to talk about that. Is that still organized out of your office? Uh, gosh, that's tough. It's it's actually a faculty committee, but yes, uh, our director still is sort of ex officio chair of that committee, but it's. It's one that we're really trying to find better ways of uh, encouraging the faculty around that committee to be more um, aggressive and, and looking for innovations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.